I've been sculpting dolls with air dry clay for years now. It's my favorite medium to sculpt fine details and create intricate characters. All my dolls begin with air dry clay prototype and only then they become the porcelain beauties you know and love. But I know some people have reservations about air dry clay. Will it be strong enough? Can I resume sculpting after my sculpture has dried? There are so many questions. So today I will try to answer them all. Keep on watching and learn how to use air dry clay to sculpt dolls. The first and most important tip, choose a good quality air dry clay. There are a lot of different clays in the market today and not all of them are the same good quality. My recommendation is to choose stone clays like Ladol, Ladol Premix or Premier. Stone clays have less paper pulp so they are suitable for sculpting fine details like facial features or hands. It contains pumice stone that will make your sculpture stronger and it won't look like sculpted from papier mache. Use armature to reinforce your sculpture. For that, I usually use thin bendable wire. This technique helps a lot when sculpting hands. Without the wire armature, the fingers most likely would just break off. If you are sculpting static sculptures or art dolls, always build a wire armature first. It will hold the air dry clay together and you will have a strong base to sculpt on. When talking about armature, I like to use styrofoam as a base for bigger pieces like the head or the torso. With the base, you will use up less clay and your sculpture will be lighter and dry faster. If you are worried about how strong the air dry clay is and want to strengthen your sculpture, you can mix the PVA glue or in other words white glue into the clay. I use PVA glue when connecting different pieces, for example fingers or joints and give these weak points more reinforcement. You can mix in some glue directly into the clay as well, just remember that it will be harder to sand the surface. My biggest advice if you want to master air dry clay is to sculpt in layers and wait for each layer to dry at least a little. This will help to avoid any cracks as well. The thick areas are drying much slower and more uneven. When the outer layer is drying, the clay shrinks a little, so any surface tension will lead to cracking. I also like to sculpt in layers because the clay becomes easier to handle. The previous layers, which are hard already, become a good base for detailing the sculpture. Also, you don't need a lot of tools to handle air dry clay. I like to have a few metal precision sculpting tools for small details, a flat sculpting tool for bigger areas, and use my fingers to smooth out the clay. Air dry clay is meant to be used with water. Always have a small dish with water while sculpting. Water helps smooth out the clay, the layers will stick together, and your sculpture overall will be more homogeneous. I like to use brushes while sculpting. A damp brush can help to smooth out the hard to get to areas or help to spread the water before adding the clay. If you ever sculpted with regular clay for ceramics, remember how crucial the water is in that process. It's very similar here too. I also use water when smoothing out the clay with my fingers. We will get much better result if you keep the surface wet. Now it's time to talk about not so fun parts of air dry clay. Be prepared to sand a lot. No matter how thoroughly you smooth out the clay, it still develops a rough texture when completely dried. If you want a satin smooth finish, you will need to sand a lot throughout the whole sculpting process. I like to have various grit sanding papers. I usually start with more of 150 grit sanding paper, 
Then I move on to the fine 400-800 grit sandpaper. It works very well in places where you don't want to lose any detail. Very fine sandpaper polish only the surface of the clay, so delicate features of the face stay intact. Patients come into place once again. Sometimes I spend a few hours sanding the doll, so be prepared for this long and tedious process. To avoid dust, cover the surfaces around you and wear a mask to protect your lungs. Another thing I found throughout the years of using air dry clay is to coat your sculpture with water after sanding. This process will glue all the fibers back to the surface, and it makes a huge difference. Sanding usually brings out the fluffy fibers that any air dry clay has, so water really helps to achieve that satin smooth finish. Here you can see how smooth my doll is without any primer just sanding and coating it with water using a soft, flat brush. Another secret that I have is to use carving techniques when sculpting small details. Air dry clay can be hard to work with on a very small scale, so carving some details can be much easier than sculpting. This process will be easier if you wet the clay first. Make sure that your piece is completely dry, coat the surface level of clay with water, using a damp brush. The top layer will get softer and carving will become more uniform and smooth. With this method you can use various tools. Because the surface layer will be quite soft, you won't need extremely sharp tools. I carve most of the details when sculpting feet or hands. And I don't think I could sculpt such miniature details from scratch. Using a scalpel you can achieve very detailed features for your dolls. Just have a little bit of patience. Scalpel is also very handy when shaping rough forms at the beginning. Air dry clay can be cut and re-sculpted as many times as you want. That's why it's so friendly for beginners. You don't need to get it right from the first try. You just re-sculpt the area until you are happy with the result. I use carving techniques for such small details like nails too. As you can see, carving is essential if you want to make the most of air dry clay. When your doll is complete and you sanded it for hours, use primer to protect your sculpture. I usually use grey primer because I cast my dolls in porcelain and it's easier to see all the imperfections I need to fix. But if you will paint your doll as is, there are white primers as well. Primer fills in all small imperfections and protects air dry clay from moisture. It also prepares the surface for painting. So don't skip this step. I will link some spray primers in the description below. And that's all my secrets that I've learned over the years of working with air dry clay. In my opinion, it's the best medium to sculpt ball joint dolls, and I recommend it to all of my students. Of course, you can disagree, so I would love to hear your experiences in the comments below. When I switched to good quality air dry clay, my dolls improved a lot. Years of experience also helped, but if you want to invest in a new hobby, you should start with clay. Tools are not as important. I hope you will try these tips and see how your dolls will improve too. All the materials I mentioned in this video will be listed in the description below. If you have any questions, I will happily answer them in the comments. 
Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.